Um, Tima, you, let's 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 start. You know. Uh, I didn't. Let's start. Yeah. So, uh, right. how do you want to do this? Maybe we can do a dry run before the real one later. Okay. Uh, Is it today wanna... your competition? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Oh, okay. At one thirty. Tapa, do you want to share the screen and practice showing the slide? Okay. Let me just try sharing. It's, uh, it's new to me sharing. Screen. No worries. Sure. Sure. Are you also so um uh, are you allowed to use like presentation slides or is it during the during the judging it's just presentation? Both I think, the speech and the presentation. Okay. Mm. <laughs> uh, Aswan, could you please uh record our time for the? Can you also see the slides? Yeah. yeah, clear. Can, huh? Okay. Okay, starting now, eh? All right. Three, two, one, go. Hi, and a very good morning. I am Aliha, and with me, there are Sophia, Tava, and Wan Ping. And we are from Group 8. Today, we'll be releasing a press statement regarding case study 2. Transformation is possible and is happening right now in so many places with so many innovations and with the engagement of so many people. When we are talking about leading in changing times, we are talking about leading while the crowd continues to move. You have to be able to make new changes even as you are making the changes you plan. Now, this is what I want to stress on. This is our part of transforming our company Sweet Care Airline into a better airline company, catering to both men and women as fair as we could. As suggested by 193 member countries of the United Nations, 17 sustainable development goals has been proposed in which I will focus on goal number five. Goal number five focuses on gender equality and set the ambitious target of achieving gender equality and empowering women everywhere by 2030. Globally, the COVID-19 pandemic is disrupting women's participation in the labor force. Although women make up 39% of global employment, they are accounted for 54% of overall job losses as of May 2020. In a survey conducted in 2018, 96% of women having children affected by this career for the worst. It is a multifaceted problem requiring a change in attitude and culture as well as legislation, but stronger legal protection is a very welcome first step. Reviewing the policy of Speed Care Airline, I would like to improvise the policy in fulfillment towards one of the 17 sustainable development goals. How can we ensure that the role of women in the workplace and in society is central to, to efforts to rebuild economies and that women do not fall further behind? Discrimination and unlawful termination of pregnant workers remain pervasive practice around the world. Speed Care Airline are exploring family-friendly policies, including offering flexible and temporary positions to support pregnant female attendants by offering them suitable ground positions. These could provide the management authority in rethinking the employee's performance reviews and professional development. Additionally, providing the pregnant woman maternity leave the policy allows them to maintain their health insurance and seek leave benefits while sustaining their seniority. In the end of the pregnancy term, they are required to undergo a few courses in order to ensure that they are up to the company's service and expectations. We will use this moment to design and put in place policies and practices that can support women in the long term. It is short-sighted for us to lose talented women who have built up skills and expectations just because of unwillingness to support them on maternity leave and on return to work. According to Pregnancy Discrimination Act, the federal laws prohibit pregnancy discrimination and provide for disability and parenting leave are Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Title VII covers many forms of discrimination you may encounter because of your sex and decisions about hiring, firing, work assignments, work conditions, promotions, benefits, training, retirement policies, and even wages. Pregnancy Discrimination Act acts to protect pregnant women in the workplace. The law made it illegal for employers to consider pregnancy in decisions about hiring, firing, and promotion. In our situation, Aina was dismissed because she was pregnant. A person can only say this contractual term is fair if people take the view that if men were to become pregnant, they too would be dismissed under this contractual term. 
they fall. As the term then will apply to both men and women, it is not discriminatory. Here, women are punished, dismissed from their employment because they become pregnant. Thus, we have breached the theory of equality. In other words, we have discriminated against women. As a matter of public policy, we must support women fulfilling this function of giving birth. Women cannot be put in a position of having to choose between earning a living and becoming a pregnant. Therefore, as a matter of public policy, we must provide every facility to assist women who are pregnant. Now I'll pass on to Sophia as a CHRO. So one of the reasons that we would like to improvise our policy is that we really care for the welfare for our employees because there are some of our employees who are the single mothers and also unmarried young women that they are the only breadwinners and to support the family financially. For example, let's take the case during the pandemic itself. Like, for example, if we terminate these employees, how are they going to um, support their family financially? Because it's really hard to get a job, especially during the pandemic. So on top of that, so definitely when we improvise this policy, definitely some employees will not agree. So how do we address this issue is that we will have a personal meeting with the involved employees. The reason why we want to have a face-to-face -face discussion with these employees is that we feel that we really value our employees because it involves a lot of costs when hiring them. So definitely during that meeting itself, we will explain the main reason why we implement the initial policy. And also at the same time, we would like to hear their inputs as well. And from that point of view is that we are trying to show that we're not being defensive to our policy. So at the same time is that we are trying to understand the employee situation. So by implementing this strategy is that uh, we take a lesson from the 1965 to 1970 of the land of great strike and boycott, whereby some of these employees that are not agree with some of the policy for the great company leading to a strike, a, a employee strike. So definitely we, don't, we do not want to face this issue. That's why we're having a face-to-face -face discussion. And the second part is that I will have my team to prepare on the, some comprehensive response in order to address this issue on the social media because definitely there are possibilities that our employees will spread this issue on the social media and that is beyond our control. So in order to um, address this issue, that's where the, our team will play its role by providing a comprehensive response because if not, uh, the similar thing which happened with, uh, for example, the company of Chick-fil-A, a, a fast-food company, whereby some of the employees feel that their right, like for example, LGBT, LGBTQ or gay rights are not being heard by the company. And because of that company, they do not address properly on the social media. That's where they can affect the company application. So that's where we really emphasize on this method so that it will help us to maintain our good reputation. While legal prohibitions alone may not eliminate discrimination, they could provide a stepping stone to a fairer and safer working environment for men and women. Reforms ensuring equality are important more than ever, especially after the pandemic's devastating effect on working women. Together with legal enforcement and increased awareness around these unfair practices, changes in the law can greatly contribute to making gender equality a reality all over the world. Thank you. Thank you, Azwan. Yep. Okay. Um, you all want me to give feedback first, or do you want to do some Q and A? What do you feel? Monday Maybe the job. feedback first yeah. on okay. our speech. Thank you. Okay. Good. Uh, sure thing. So uh, first and foremost, uh, congrats. Uh, definitely. Um, you know, you've you've got your structure there, and you are. Definitely, you're further than where you were yesterday. Um, so a few things come to my mind Im 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 immediately, Laya. Firstly, let's talk about how you start. You start by giving you know, a general big picture. You talk about UN SDGs. You talk about women in the workforce and all that, right? And job losses. Um, while this is good, and I know we discussed this in brief yesterday, now that I'm listening to you again, only in your second minute, you got into the problem statement. I feel you may either want to shorten your opening or you come up with the problem statement a lot quicker. Because uh, in the context of a, of, a, of a press release or conference, press conference, you don't want to be seen um, like you don't understand what the issue on the ground is, right? So I think that's the first comment. I think the second one to that is maybe a little bit more structuring. Um, there were parts where when you started, because it was going on for two minutes and two minutes is quite long, 
in that sense, to just listen to a, a, a more generic opening. I wasn't sure whether, is this still the opening? Are, are we getting into substantive parts? Because you're now giving me examples of UN SDG and women building up. So structuring becomes more important. I think one way you can start um, also is by, you know, just say, introduce, after you've introduced yourself, maybe what you can also do is you can say, so, uh, you know, like ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, federal employees, also have those sort of um, paragraph breakers if you need to, because that, you know, usually that jolts um, the audience to listen. Uh, and then you go, uh, so in today's press conference, there are, you know, three or four things we'd like to identify, you know, firstly, we're going to talk to you a bit about um, why we are calling today's press conference. Uh, and then that, that's where you sort of go into the problem first. Uh, you know, recently it has come to our attention that a stewardess has been terminated, uh, stewardess employment has been terminated uh, due to a, a certain uh, alleged breach in the collective agreement, right? And the manager uh, who has done this did so on the back, you know, based on what, what so you sort of, sort of try to lay out the law. So from here, you know, as a, as a company, um, this issue has been brought to our attention, you know, I as the CEO, CEO, CHR, and as a team, we have been discussing this to understand. So I think that's another element. Um, the third point I want to say is, so is how, you know, the fact that you're, you need to also emphasize that you're working as a team. Lah. And, you know, because, because you're the CEO, you've been tasked to talk a bit about more. Okay. Um, then after you do the problem statement, then you talk, then you can go into uh, the, the big picture. So what happens, what you're saying now is, so these are the problems that we identified. Then you can say, look, you know, um, uh, speed care, talk about the values of the company. You know, speed care is a company that values diversity, inclusion, blah, 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 blah. We are aligned to UN SDGs. Uh, using the word we and saying speed care as a, as a company, it's speed care, right? Did I get the right word? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. Um, then I think creates also that sense of togetherness. So, you know, if you imagine Air Asia, Tony Fernandez, he would always either say we or Air Asia. Very rarely does he say I, I, I. You, know, you know what I mean? Just from a semantic perspective. Then you can talk about, you can say how this incident uh, is a reminder for that we need to accelerate our transformation and realization of values. I think that's 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 sort of like the key. Uh, and 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 then then you sort of go into it. Lah. Then you can say, okay, so um, then you talk about your proposal, right? So you can say there are two things, you know, that you need to address. Lah. Number one is the sort of discriminatory uh, policy. Then what you said earlier makes sense. Lah. So you talk about how the world is changing, UN SDGs, what the numbers are, blah, blah, blah. So we as a company, we realize that this situation cannot continue. Therefore, we want to take action. So what we'll be doing moving forward is we will now be changing the policy. We'll be introducing, you know, two or three new things. Lah. So number one, um, there'll be no more automatic termination. Uh, number two, in replace of that, we will have uh, alternatives for them. Number three, uh, you know, what you said earlier, like we'll, we'll find them opportunities or we'll give them some form of early uh, leave if you wanted to. Then, 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 so then you sort of wrap up that first part, right? How do you address um, the sort of discriminatory uh, aspect? Then your second issue that you're talking about, so as Sophia was highlighting, um, she also mentioned uh, the, 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 the dissatisfaction or the backlash against the employees. Then you can say, so we feel, so what we've done is because this is an internal matter, uh, we would nevertheless like to share with all of you uh, how the company views employee welfare and engagement. I think you need to start, and, and one part of your flow that's missing currently is that it's a collective agreement. Uh, a collective agreement, I know uh, Sophia had cited two examples. One was the London strikes, and another one was like a Chickerfield situation, right? Um, you need to sort of explain that. You know, we've also identified that the source of this policy has come from a collective agreement, which is an agreement between the trade union and the group human resources. Therefore, as part of managing employee backlash, you want to talk to, for example, uh, the union leader, right? And ask them, you know, whether, and obviously you have to, it's, it's a negotiation, right? Um, obviously a, a collective agreement at its core is about protecting employee rights, both. And, and you all pointed out a very good point, um, both male and female. Um, so you'll say that as part of this engagement, just, just, just throw in the point that you also want to talk to the union leaders as well and to talk about how at that union leadership level, um, you can affect change like, without hindering their rights to, to negotiate a collective agreement. Um, so that's, so that's, that's, I think that one's, I think will add a little bit of, a little bit more spice to your thing. Then the examples of London, uh, I think you gave an example of uh, something happened in London and Chicago, or maybe there was a, a subway, you know, the, the tube, they often have strikes and stuff like that, right? So, 
So what you're doing then is you're balancing sort of like a top-down approach where your C-suite executives want to change it so you're less discriminatory. But at the same time, you're also addressing the bottoms up sort of approach where you're still engaging with the people who are in charge of the collective agreement. Um, so that's another sort of dimension uh, that you all have to take into as well, uh, uh, in, into it. Okay, um, what else? Um, okay, so, so, so those are general ones. Now, in terms of presentation style, I feel uh, it was good. I mean, you are no issues with language, but I think it can be a little bit more engaging and natural. Um, you know, like, like Maliha, you sounded more like you were reading a speech, the same, same Sophia, as opposed to sort of talking with members of the press. So I think, like I said earlier, you know, using words like we as a company, these are our values, you know, speak care, care for its employees, a little bit more of this. Um, again, I think the good example is imagine you were someone like Richard Branson or Elon Musk, maybe not him, like he's, he's not the, the most empathic, empathetic of characters, or, or Tony Fernandez, and how, if they were to speak to somebody, that's how they would speak. Um, yeah, and then I think as you as you do your structuring, you sign post, right? So here's our introduction, here are the two points, here are the me, uh, and then you have your conclusion. Um, so you can, so after you pass it on, so I'd like to invite, uh, you know, Sophia, who's our group uh, HR head, um, and she will give you these points. And then once Sophia is done, you pass it back to CEO. So that's that's from the human resource perspective, we'll now pass it back to the CEO. Um, and CEO. I think to end, maybe the CEO, what you can even do is if you want to be uh, a bit more all encompassing, you might, you, you could even say things like, uh, I think at the end, you know, as Speed Care, we're a company that cares for society. Uh, we are also because, but we are also, you know, uh, we also will engage with our shareholders, our board members, our stakeholders to ensure that everybody is aligned in this vision moving forward. Then you can even just pop in and say, you know, we've even spoken to our CFO who is here on the side and she is ready or he or she is ready to take questions later. But we will ensure that all these reforms that we are undertaking will also ensure that um, it doesn't affect our bottom line in the long run. And, and, then, and then you sort of wrap it up there. So what you're doing is you're sort of hinting at the judges that you can ask about the finances part, you know, uh, which then you will be prepared for uh, during the Q&A. Okay so, those, okay, so those are my comments based on your lovely presentation. Any questions? No, but I think I get the structure now, you know, to do the press statement. Thank you. Yeah. And then um, usually what you do is you can also end with something like, you know, if members of the media or employees have further questions, please contact us at, maybe you can even say, uh, give, a, give a contact address or a, appoint a person, because when you appoint a person, that shows your commitment to the cause. Uh, thank you, Azwan. Always uh, spoiling our, our fun. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. Okay, here's an idea. It just, it just crossed my mind. Maybe G Group HR may want to even consider employing a diversity officer, you know, so that um, these kind of things are looked into more comprehensively in the future. Um, just to note that one of the criteria I would assume you will be judged on is the feasibility of all your proposals, right? Hence, things like you know, making sure there's a diversity officer ensures that you close the loop on this situation. Because as a company, you'll say this was just one aspect of the collective agreement, which was highlighted because there was a problem. There might be others that exist in our HR policy. So this is something that we also commit to doing in the long run as part of the, the company's transformation. Okay. Uh, you guys want to proceed with Q&A? Now is a good time. Yeah. Um, do you have any other questions that you'd like to, or maybe questions which I had asked yesterday that you want to clarify? Because I think we went through a lot of potential questions yesterday, so there may not be a need for me to sort of test you now on them. Uh, more if you have uh, feedback that you need. Papa, do you want to ask? Um. Actually, Daniel, I think uh, uh, yesterday's because yesterday you've, you've already explained to us like how do you tackle like a financial question. So that that was like my biggest query. Otherwise, okay. I think uh, I can sort of look for evidence on the internet for companies okay. who have uh, bounced back from like a, an economical dip. So that's fine so far, I guess. Good, good. Have, have you found anything yet? Um, yeah, one is the Malaysian Airlines, but uh, Malaysian Airlines is... Uh, sort of connected to the government 
uh, it, it whenever it is facing any financial losses, it can sort of rebuild its structure uh, while facing those financial crises because uh, they are sort of bounded to the government. And according to a few ministers, it is sort of a national identity. So it's not like those private companies who the government will allow to just waste away like that. So since it's government, it's easier for it to like bounce back. Other companies, they have not faced such ma massive financial losses because there are a few um, effective ways that they are implementing to reduce costs. So that's what mm -hmm. I, I found. Um, possibly I need to look for companies in other countries. Lah. So that, that is something I've not done. I've only looked at Malaysian airline companies. Yeah, and I think I think if I may say, I don't think Malaysia Airlines is your best of example, mm. um, because it is a company which it's not it's not an example of where, when companies start moving towards more ethical practices, it makes a profit. I think that's just an example of of, of bailouts and, and stuff. So, uh, let me see. I think if you if you were to Google it, a few minutes. Um, If you all have any other questions along the way, just let me know. Yeah. I'm Googling up our, our ethical companies, you know, more profitable. A few things pop up, but they don't give, I, don't, I can't seem to find or see examples yet. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's both ethical as well as non-discriminatory. So, for example, if I were to chat box, right? So, I've got five minutes left. Okay, so that's one. Um, that's an example where you can look into it, but you, you want to find like real examples. Lah. So, what, what would happen then in the context of other, if, it, if, if you want to put it into the main body of a presentation, I think that depends on you, uh, or whether Tavanesh, you sort of keep it as, a, as something to use during the QA. I'll put it this way even if the judges don't ask the question that's direct, you want to direct the judges to that question, especially if it's a good example. Um, oh yeah, that's right. So your slides just now were a little bit like, I think you may need to also just double check the order of your slides to align with your uh, presentation. Um, and sometimes your slides were quite um, wordy as well, quite, um, what's the word? There's quite a lot of words. So it wasn't very easy. So as I was listening to Mani House, I was also sort of looking at the slides. So I perhaps got a bit distracted. Yeah, uh, let's see. Um, Where's your CTO this morning? She's gone missing. Oh, she has already mentioned to us that she'll be busy. She cannot attend this session, but she'll be available for the pitching session. Okay, yeah, no problem. So it says, what else is there? Uh, how would you resolve the issue as C-suite executives? Uh, what changes in policy? I think you've got that. Uh, how would you handle employees backlash? Yeah, I think I think you all are quite covered. I think what you now need is to sort of, um, I suppose with a little bit of advice I was able to give, to sit down as a team and structure it again. Lah. Any other, any other thoughts or questions that you have? Uh, I want to ask, do I need to introduce sure. every, each member of my team with their position? Um, like the no, I don't think it's that necessary. I think what you do is just say that, you know, I have, you know, I'm Maliha, I'm group CEO, I've got with me, but just mention it very fast. I've got with me my CEO, blah, 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 blah. Uh, today, um, I'll be, you know, as CEO, I'll be presenting and, you know, together with my group HR. Uh, the rest of my team will be taking, will be, you know, supporting with questions later on. Then you go, All right. allow me, allow me to get right into it. Yeah. You know, you want to, you want to do a press conference, maybe like Tansri Hisham, not like uh, Tajuddin. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, would you like to ask, uh, I mean, me or us any questions like representing the media while we still have some time? Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, Okay, I'll ask uh, Sophia. Earlier, you talked about you know caring for the welfare of the employees. You talked about single women, some of them being uh, only breadwinners. Um, but you know, uh, and 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 we believe that the reason why the collective agreement exists is because they want to ensure that um, your stewardesses don't just suddenly disappear from the workforce. How do you plan to? manage your employee headcount, especially since the numbers will probably increase with this policy. Uh, can you repeat the earlier part? Because I, I don't oh. get it, the earlier part. 
Okay, never mind. I'll keep it. I'll keep it simple. Uh, I'll change it. So it's not uncommon in the airlines industry to have these policies. They are not discriminatory, but they are actually for business, uh, for business benefit. How would you, uh, how would you manage an increase in hiring if you need to allow your stewardesses to take time off? So basically, the question is that how do we manage the um, increase in our hiring costs? Is it when we implement these changes of policy? Hmm. Okay, all right. So how do we manage is that is uh, first of all is um, first is we believe that um, we really prioritize on our services and also our the values or the um, how to say the our resources of asset when we hiring the employees. So if let's say the employee is really good enough and they are able to provide a lot of value, so we do not mind to invest a lot of uh, cost in the hiring because we believe that all of these costs will turn to a profit to our company. So that's why we try to implement this policy to ensure that our employees really stick to our company so that they can continue to contribute the values for our company. Okay, um, maybe a question for the CEO. Uh, have you obtained board approval for this? And would you consider diversifying your board composition? Yeah, before this pre-statement is released, we have discussed with all our stakeholders and our managers, and we have decided that this policy will be visible for the changes. Okay. Uh, Mr. CEO Taba, uh, I think one last question. We've got about two minutes left. Um, do you have data that says, you know, how many stewardesses actually get pregnant while on the job, uh, which would either justify or not justify a change in policy? Um, how your the data the request is how many pregnant stewardesses as stewardesses? Yeah, I mean, is, is 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 this really an issue in the industry that that the law that the condition was required? I think we've got less than a minute, so better. Yes, yeah. uh, I think it is because uh, with the current pandemic, we're seeing a rise in uh, uh, pregnancy rates. Uh, the statistics, the numbers, uh, I will, I will, I will need to get to that. But I'm sure yeah. that there's a trend in that. The trend shows that there's an increase in the number of uh, uh, pregnancies, especially in as to So okay. it is important to, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, be careful with those kind of answers unless you have the exact data because. That sort of means you might be justifying a discriminatory policy, i.e., you want to avoid it. You know what I mean? So what you're saying is, you know, based on data, this is what they've said. Um, there is a tendency for pregnancies in certain times. So be careful with the sort of uh, absolute language. Be more like there's a tendency, there's a probability, you know. But for us, then you keep going back to your core point. But oh. for us at, at Speed Care, uh, we are not concerned because we want to make sure that we are inclusive. So even if people get pregnant, we welcome people having families, and we as a company, we are supportive of this. Okay, yeah. e even if I don't know the, the, the data, like the numbers. I mean, uh, you should try to check to find. If you can't find it, never mind. Uh, then, then just say that, uh, uh, I, think, I think it's better to have it to be prepared, but if you don't, then you should avoid trying to have a, a certain, you know, uh, question. Okay, sorry, uh, landing on a certain number or a certain assumption. Okay, it's 11 o'clock. Uh, Azwan, are they going to quick, kick us out automatically or? Uh, the waiting for the PIC to move move out and move us. Oh, oh waiting for the queue. Okay. Uh, so good so luck. Uh, okay, no problem then. So I'll say good luck to Group A. Um, you all have your Q your sort of key points, and and yeah, I wish you I wish you the best. I don't think we'll meet up this soon. Feel free to add me up on LinkedIn. It's the same name. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Thank sure. you, Daniel. Daniel. Thank you so much. Daniel. It's very helpful. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope so. I hope so. This is this is quite exciting to to.